I want to show the reduction of a carboxylic acid or an ester with lithium aluminum hydride over sodium borohydride because this is a two-step process. And I want to see, I want to show you the similarities and the differences here as we go through this process. So I'm actually going to give a specific uh, ester in this case and talk about what is happening and why it is happening. So lithium is a spectator ion, and then we have our aluminum hydride. Now just as we saw with the sodium borohydride, when you break an aluminum hydrogen bond, the hydrogen is more electronegative, so it will take the electrons with it and become a hydride. And the carbonyl carbon here is positive in terms of its oxidation number, so it will act as an electron pair acceptor. It will be your electrophile. So you will accept your nucleophile and break your pi bond. And as that happens, oxygen will become an electron pair donor and donate electrons to the aluminum. Now, just so you know, another way to draw appropriate arrows, if you prefer, would be to just show this pair of electrons forming a bond to the aluminum because the pi bond is going to break. That's acceptable to show. I just like to show the pi bond breaking personally. So I'm going to show my pi bond breaking and then a pair of electrons from the oxygen binding to the aluminum. And you make a new complex and it is a tetrahedral intermediate, something we see a lot of. I'm going to draw this slightly different, maybe, than, um, I'm going to draw it in two different ways, I think. I think that will be important to show it in a couple of different ways. This is the most commonly drawn way of drawing this complex. Um, one other thing you should be aware of is that aluminum and oxygen do not really truly form a polar covalent bond. It's more of an ionic bond. The oxygen is going to hang out with those electrons more often than the aluminum. Um, and what happens here, oh, and there's still lithium, is that the pi bond is going to reform at this point in time. And just be aware, oh, just be aware that you could actually go through this process three more times with uh, three more of these carbonyl compounds because you have three more hydrides that can be used. So at the end of the day, what you would truly have, oh, let me use a different color, what you would truly have is this, okay, where R is this. This is what is equal to the R groups that you're seeing here. That's what they are. So you've got four of these around the aluminum. Now, as I was mentioning a moment ago, that aluminum-oxygen bond is polarized toward the oxygen, and it will use it to reform the carbon-oxygen bond. Uh, the double bond here. Now, carbon cannot have 10 electrons, and so something's going to have to go. Normally, you would not have a good leaving group here, but in this case, you do, because this aluminum complex is actually a stronger base than just kicking out the alkoxide. And this is why esters do this. This is why carboxylic acids do this, is because it is a strong enough reducing agent. Um, and the reason it's a strong enough reducing agent is because you can kick out a weaker base. And that's why this actually occurs. So basically what we've done is we've created an aldehyde from the first round of this reaction. And this base that you see here 
doesn't really just hang out by itself. It may be like this, or you may also see it bound up like this. This is also a possibility. Okay, so this is actually the more likely possibility down here on the bottom so that you can get rid of the other three R groups attached to the aluminum in the same fashion. But the point is here, you have created an aldehyde by that first reduction. So it's going to continue with this process further with some more aluminum hydride in some form. It may be one of these that has some R groups on it. It may just have hydrogens on it. It doesn't really matter, but the point is there is a hydride available. So, if you have your complex, and you have some more lithium aluminum hydride available, or at least one of these complexes that has a hydride attached to aluminum. As we saw before, the hydride is the more electronegative of the two. It will act as the nucleophile and add to the carbonyl carbon, which is our electrophile. You'll break the pi bond because it's the weakest of the bonds, and you can't have more than four bonds to a carbon. As that happens, this oxygen is gaining negative character. It will use that pair of electrons to bind to the aluminum. Once this has occurred, you make a new complex, a new tetrahedral intermediate. Now this could go through the same process three more times because you have three more hydrides here. By the way, I've drawn it. <coughs> Excuse me. At this point, you'd leave it alone. And it would be very important for the entire reaction that you do not have a solvent that has an acidic proton available. That would be a disaster for this reaction. So you would probably have done this reaction in diethyl ether. After the reaction has had time to complete, you would add water, and you do this dropwise. You'd make sure that you do this very slowly. Oops, let me change my color. So this aluminum oxygen bond is polarized toward the oxygen, and it will take that pair of electrons. As that happens, this oxygen can use its electron pairs to pick off a proton. As that happens, electrons are given back to the oxygen. The oxygen is gaining a negative character, and it uses those electrons to donate to the aluminum. Again, this looks very, very much like the last step in the hydroboration oxidation that we've seen before in 351 with boron. And it's very similar to the same little dance. So, at the end of the day, you are able to produce an alcohol. And you also produce, well, these R's may be hydrogens, they may be other groups, I'm not really entirely certain what they are at any point in the reaction. And that's not really important. This is what you end up with. And it's important to remember that these two hydrogens were added as hydrides. They came from the hydrogens attached to the aluminum. Whereas this hydrogen that is added came from the solvent. It came from the water. Or you could have used an alcohol as well. And the reason, again, that this goes in the way it does is that the conjugate bases you are producing, either a hydroxide or an alkoxide, are weaker bases than a hydride, and so this is favorable acid-base chemistry, and that's why this actually occurs.